This is Kevin Cole at the University of Nebraska. The topic is thermodynamics and the example is temperature scales. There are four temperature scales of interest in thermodynamics. There's Kelvin, which is an absolute scale, Celsius, and Fahrenheit, which are not absolute scales. They have a different reference point. And Rankine, which is an absolute scale. So that's one way to keep track of them. Another way is we keep track of them is the two of these uh, systems are in the SI system, centigrade and Kelvin, and two of these are in the English system, Rankine and Fahrenheit. We also keep track of these by where is absolute zero, where is the ice point, and where is the steam point. Now a comparison among these is the distance between the ice point and the steam point. In the uh, SI system, there's 100 degrees between the ice point and the steam point. And in the uh, English system, there's 180 degrees between the ice point and the steam point. So physically it's the same, so we could say delta T equals 100 C, which is the same as 180 F. And we can use that to, to create a conversion factor. So I could divide by 100 and get that 1 degree C is the same as 1.8 degrees F. Now, the degree centigrade is the same size as a degree Kelvin, and a degree Rankine is the same size as a degree Fahrenheit. So we could also write this as uh, 1 degree Kelvin equals 1.8 degrees Rankine. And we could take both of these guys and make conversion factors as follows. I could say convert, let me scroll up a bit, convert, I could convert 1.8 Fahrenheit per degree C, or I could convert 1.8 uh, Rankine per degree Kelvin. And we're going to use these guys as we do some examples. All right, let's look at some examples. Given a temperature of 25 C, let's find the temperature in Fahrenheit. I'll take 25 C. I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor, 1.8 Fahrenheit per C. Now the C's cancel. And when I crunch those numbers, I get 45. Now I'm going to call that Fahrenheit, but I'm going to put it in parentheses because this is really a change of, of temperature of 45 degrees above the ice point. And to get to uh, proper uh, degrees Fahrenheit, I've got to add the ice point, which for Fahrenheit is here. I'm going to add 32 degrees. Add the ice point. And when I do that, I get 77. And that is indeed degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the answer to example A. Example B. Given 350C, find the temperature in R. Well, R is an absolute temperature scale. Let's start the same way. I'm going to say 350C multiplied by a conversion factor, 1.8 Fahrenheit per C. When I crunch the numbers, that's 630. Again, I'm going to say that that's uh, Fahrenheit, but in parentheses, because this is above the ice point. And I need to add the ice point to get the final system that I want add the ice point. Well, what is the ice point in Rankine? Up here, the ice point in Rankine is 491.67. 491.67. That's the value I'm going to use. Let me pull that. Can I see that? I can sort of see that. All right, 491.67. Add that. I'm going to get 1121.67. And that is indeed in Rankine, and that is the answer I wanted. So that takes care of example B. Uh, scrolling up, example C says, given 1100 degrees R, that's an absolute scale, find, centigrade, find the temperature in centigrade that is not absolute. All right, so I'm going to take my 1100 R, and to do my conversion, I'm going to use this conversion factor up here, 1.8 
ranking per Kelvin. So I'm going to pull that guy down, use that guy. But I'm going to divide by that, 1.8 ranking per Kelvin. I have to divide so that the ranking here cancels the ranking there, and the Kelvin comes upstairs. So that's going to become, when I crunch the numbers, 1100 over 1 1.8 is 611.1, and that is indeed degrees Kelvin, absolute. But I'm looking for a temperature in C, which is not absolute, so I have to subtract the ice point. And the ice point, let me scroll up, the ice point for uh, is 273 in centigrade, so I need to subtract that. I'm going to say minus 273.15. When I do that, I'm going to get plus 337.95, and that is indeed centigrade, and that is the temperature we wanted. Before we stop, I want to look at uh, where these names came from for our temperature scales. The uh, Fahrenheit scale is named for Daniel Fahrenheit, a Dutch German fellow who was a glass blower who invented the liquid and glass thermometer. Now, he chose his zero point as the coldest temperature he knew. He didn't have a mechanical refrigerator. He could make uh, something cold by ice and water and salt together. Perhaps he liked making ice cream at home. Uh, and the fact that it's 180 degrees between the ice point and the steam point in the Fahrenheit system was because he liked 180. It was divisible by some integers. We, not, we may not have made that choice today. Uh, the Celsius scale is named for a Swede, Anders Celsius, and he put 100 steps between ice and steam. The uh, Kelvin scale is named not for a man, but for his title. William Thompson was the man, and he determined the precise value of the absolute zero was minus 273.15, and the absolute scale based on the centigrade scale is named for him. His title was Baron, Baron Kelvin. And then finally, the Rankine scale uh, is named for a Scot, and he just took the Fahrenheit scale and extrapolated it back to absolute zero. So that temperature scale, Rankine, was named for him. Uh, his name actually is better known related to steam engines. Let me... Um, Go back and recap the examples we looked at today. We've got four temperature scales. The Kelvin scale is an absolute scale, and the Rankine scale is an absolute scale. Celsius and Fahrenheit are based on some other things, the ice point and the steam point, for example. And uh, where the ice point is located is 0C and 32F. We can use the distance between ice and steam to create some conversion factors. And we can use those in converting temperatures. When we do a conversion, sometimes we have to add the ice point, as in example A, uh, and in example B. And sometimes we have to uh, subtract the ice point. And if you can keep that straight, all will be well.